Hello friends, in today's discussion on current affairs, we have the first question on the world's best employers. According to the Forbes uh, magazine, Forbes is a magazine, Forbes uh, world's finest employers rankings, which uh, company is India's best employer and has been ranked 20th globally. Well, um, the answer is there. This is India's biggest private sector employer as well. And to take it further, let's look at the names of the top five global finest employers. Please write world's finest employers, top five. One, the best employer in the world is Samsung Electronics. Samsung. Samsung Electronics. It has about 20,000 employees and they believe that uh, this is the best company to work for. One, Samsung. Two, Microsoft Corporation. Microsoft Corporation. Three, IBM. IBM, which is International Business Machines. Four, Alphabet. A-L-P-H-A-B-E-T. Alphabet, which is, which as you know, uh, is a parent uh, of companies like Google. Okay. Number five, Apple, A-P-P-L-E, Apple. So to repeat, one, Samsung, two, Microsoft, three, uh, IBM, four, Alphabet, five, Amazon. What about India's top five? You could write this. Um, 20, Reliance Industries, 20. So the rank that I'm mentioning here is, you know, the global rank, okay? 20 is a global rank. 20 Reliance Industries next 137 137 HDFC Bank HDFC Bank next 173 173 Bajaj Auto Bajaj Auto next 240 Aditya Birla Group, Aditya Birla Group, and um, the fifth place is triple three, three three three, rank three three three. Hero Motor Corp, Hero Motor Motor Corp, M O T O C O R P, Motor Corp. So to repeat, twentieth global rank, Reliance Industries, one thirty seven, H D F C Bank. 173 Bajaj Auto, 240 Aditya Birla Group, 333 Hero Motor Corp. So we got top five in India and top five globally. Okay. So let's take it further. And um, if you want to know the, you know, the CEOs, I can tell you the names of the CEOs of these companies as well as the top five. But uh, shall we stick to the top five or these guys? Mm, I'll make a decision now. Because see, when I plan this class, I do not think of, okay, this is something that I'm going to share, the names of CEOs and all. But anyway, um, because often we discuss Indian companies, so we don't discuss companies like Bajaj Auto, which is uh, run by Rajiv Bajaj. Rajiv Bajaj, he is the managing director and CEO. Rajiv Bajaj. Aditya Birla Group is headed by Kumar Mangalam Birla. Kumar Mangalam Birla. Hero Motor Corp, the CEO is uh, Pawan Munjal, M-U-N-J-A-L, Munjal. See, Munjal family owns the Hero Group. Like you have the Ambani's, you know, owning uh, Reliance Industries and Reliance Groups. Yeah, both, uh, you know, Anil as well as Mukesh Groups. We're discussing Motor Corp here, Hero Motor Corp. This is owned by uh, Pawan Munjal, Pawan Munjal. Coming to the names of the CEOs of the top um, five companies, global five companies, one Samsung, because see, I am sharing this information primarily keeping in mind um, some questions in the recent exams, like, you know, there was this question on the CEO of Apple. So you don't say Apple, you say Apple. Okay. So you have this um, one Samsung Electronics, uh, whose CEO is, um, I'm talking of the English name because the Korean name is slightly different. So the English name is J Lee, J A Y J. Lee, L E E, Lee, J Lee. Then Microsoft. 
ಸತ್ಯ ನಾಡೆಲ್ಲ ಸತ್ಯ ನಾಡೆಲ್ಲ ಎನ್ ಎ ಡಿ ಇ ಎಲ್ ಎಲ್ ಎ ಸತ್ಯ ನಾಡೆಲ್ಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಐ ಬಿ ಎಂ ಅರವಿಂದ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅರವಿಂದ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅರವಿಂದ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಫೋರ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ಫಾಬೆಟ್ ಸುಂದರ್ ಪಿಚಾಯ್ ಸುಂದರ್ ಪಿಚಾಯ್ ಸುಂದರ್ ಪಿಚಾಯ್ ಸಿ ಟೂ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಆಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಆರಿಜಿನ್ ಸಿಇಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವಿ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆಪಲ್ ಆಪಲ್ ಸಿಇಒ ಇಸ್ ಟಿಮ್ ಕುಕ್ ಟಿಮ್ ಕುಕ್ ಸಿಒಕೆ ಟಿಮ್ ಕುಕ್ so we got uh, you know a comprehensive list there let's do it take it further with which bank had did the bureau of energy efficiency recently sign an an mou an mou or memorandum of understanding to finance green micro small and medium enterprises so it was the uh, sidbi sidbi as you know the full name is small industries development bank of india small industries the development bank of india small industries development bank of india um this is run by shiva subramanyam raman shiva subramanyam raman r a m a n n r a m a n n raman so what is the purpose of this particular mou you could write if you want um to make to make msmes msmes micro small and medium enterprises more energy efficient more energy efficient more energy efficient in their operations in their operations to support to support india's 2030 india's 2030 sustainable development goals sustainable development goals so we have a certain targets we have certain set of targets for 2030 g 2030 sdgs and to that extent we are looking at how do we minimize environmental pollution and you know conserve environment you know prevent um, adverse climate change and all that so sidbi is doing this but who is the power minister in india so if you want the power minister's name you could write this uh, minister of power so the guy who heads this power ministry also heads another ministry so right minister minister of power union minister of power and and new and renewable energy new and renewable energy new and renewable energy new and renewable energy the name of the guy is raj kumar singh raj kumar singh raj kumar singh raj kumar singh Raj Kumar Singh. Okay, there we go. What about the name of the guy who heads NABAD? A NABAD is run by, NABAD is the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. This, ladies and gentlemen, is run by Suchindra Mishra. Suchindra. S-U-C-H-I-N-D-R-A. Suchindra Mishra. Suchindra Mishra. Next, IDBI Bank. The CEO is Rakesh Sharma. Rakesh Sharma then Exim Bank which is the export import bank of India the managing director is Harsha Bangari Harsha Bangari B A N G A R I Bangari next state bank of india of course you know it's Dinesh Khara Dinesh Khara Okay there we go the Indian Ministry of Tourism participated in the World Travel Market uh, 2022 held in uh, London so i'm going to give you a do- little dope on world tourism stuff so please write this world tourism day world tourism day 27th september 
27 सितंबर नेक्स्ट राइट दिस वर्ल्ड टूरिज्म ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्ल्ड टूरिज्म ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सम रिलेटेड स्टाफ दैट्स अबाउट इट व्हाई लीव एनीथिंग आई आई हैव दिस बिलीफ दैट आई शुडंट लीव एनीथिंग अनटच्ड आई मीन इफ वी कैन गेट मोर आउट ऑफ इट यू नो लेट्स टेक दैट uh world tourism organization uh it's headed by it's headquartered in madrid spain m a d r a r i d m a d r i d madrid spain and its chief is zurab i repeat zurab z u r a b zurab zurab polo likashvili i'll spell it for you Today I'm not writing anything. I'm not using the writing pad, but I'll spell it for you. Zurab, Z U R A B. Zurab. Polo Likashvili is P O L O L I K A S H V I L I. P O L O L I K A S H V I L I. Polo Likashvili. He belongs to this country called Georgia. G O Sorry, G E. I'm sorry. G E O R G I A. Georgia. Georgia. Okay. You know, the country that receives the highest number of tourists is France. You could write this: highest tourist arrivals. Highest tourist arrivals. Dash France. Top three would be France, Spain, and United States. Top three: France, Spain, United States. India ranks about seventeenth, if I'm not wrong. Hmm. How many tourists visited France? Nine crore. Beat that. Nine crore. India received about, um, if I'm not wrong, India received about one point five crore. So think about this now. Nine crore. If we have great infrastructure, we, there is safety for tourists. There is, uh, you know, uh, there is no cultural discrimination. There, it is rampant of goods. Um, it is, you know, we make life easy for tourists to come in. You know, then we would have more number because India, as such, has more tourist destinations, more to see for you know tourists, more to experience for tourists than countries like France offer. But unfortunately, France receives many more tourists than India does, and you just look around, you will understand why. Yeah, poor infrastructure. You know, uh, if you look at just the hotel infrastructure, the hospitality industry, you would find that you know you either have very good hotels in the expensive range, you know, five star category and all, and then you have budget hotels which are not well maintained. Most of which are not well maintained. I'm saying most of which. Hmm? So there is a wide gap here, but then you know there is pretty little that um, you know people could do except that you know improve infrastructure. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we from London. Let's go to some other place of the world. Who was appointed honorary member in the General Division of the Order of Australia for their service to the to the Australia India bilateral relationship? Amit Das Gupta. See this order of Australia is given in four categories primarily for those you know who who have done much to deepen the relationship to improve the quality of life in Australia and for those they are advocating now um, it is also to do with bilateral relationships and everything so Amit Das Gupta was a consul general in the Indian embassy in Australia he has done you know a great deal of work uh, to promote people to people contact by establishing the australia india youth league now this was established more than 15 years back but it's doing very well we do very well so you know who is the foreign secretary of india you know the foreign minister of india is subramaniam jay shankar and the foreign secretary of india is um vinay mohan quatra vinay vinay mohan quatra k w a t r a quatra Miller and Aruna Miller in a while. Sean Sharon Negi. 
who passed away recently was independent india's first voter now this was a question see there was someone who asked me this question like how would someone know that they this was the first voter because voting takes place across the country but how would they know see this guy belonged to himachal pradesh um negi ji belonged to himachal pradesh and uh, himachal pradesh had the 1951 election 6 months before other parts of india did yes because the uh, winter in himachal pradesh would set which would be quite harsh it would be pretty difficult for people for the polling staff for the ordinary citizens you know to engage in polling activity so what uh, the government of india did was to hold the general the general elections in himachal pradesh 6 months in advance and it was here that they found that sham sharan negi was a first voter ever he was a first voter of independent india and since 1951 till his death you know a week back um, he was uh, run you know he had voted in every election every election in fact when he passed away um, the government of india said that he would be cremated with full state honors full state honors okay hey by the way who do you think is the lok sabha speaker the lok sabha speaker is om birla o m o m birla b i r l a om birla you know who's the cabinet secretary of india the cabinet secretary of india is uh, rajiv gauba g a u b a gauba i don't want to discuss ministers and all that that's why in the tourism thing also i didn't discuss the minister's name so too many times we have discussed these things okay so we have rajiv gauba and lok sabha speaker is om birla who is the since it's about voters and all that who is the election commissioner of india the election commissioner of india is uh, the chief election commissioner of india is rajiv kumar rajiv kumar which payments bank conducted india's first floating financial literacy camp with an initiative called niveshak didi niveshak means investor didi sister to promote financial literacy by the women for the women it was a floating campaign actually it was conducted in and around dal lake in srinagar okay jammu and kashmir so it was conducted by you know uh, india post uh, payments bank india post payments bank so what about these uh, payments bank and what about the ceos of all this paytm payments bank you could write this paytm payments bank satish kumar gupta satish kumar gupta satish kumar gupta airtel payments bank so india pay post uh, will not discuss airtel payments bank anubrata biswas <coughs> anubrata a n u b r a t a <coughs> anubrata biswas b i s w a s <clears throat> anubrata biswas then fino fino payments bank is run by rishi gupta rishi gupta rishi gupta and jio which is owned by the reliance group he is run this jio payments bank ceo is vinod ishwaran vinod ishwaran ishwaran Okay, there we go. Which company installed India's largest wind turbine that is taller than the Statue of Unity? How tall is the Statue of Unity at Kevadiya in Gujarat? The Statue of Unity is, um, you know, a monolithic uh, statue of uh, uh, India's Iron Man, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Vallabhai was his name, and. Um, you know a sardar was his what we say uh, was his title okay so sardar vallabhai patel's statue is in kevadiya and this is 182 meters tall 182 meters tall okay but andani group has come up with the largest wind turbine which is like what um, about 200 meter tall 200 meters okay that's a lot of it and this is basically a wind turbine is a wind vane with the blades and all that 
See, it has blades uh, whose um, you know span is about 78 meters. 78 meter blades would make it wider than the wings of Jumbo Jet 747. Can you beat that? 747 Jumbo Jet's wingspan is among the widest for all planes. And the blades of this, you know, wind turbine are wider, are longer than, you know, the, the wingspan of um, 747 Jumbo Jet. That's a lot of it, yeah? That's pretty big, pretty heavy also. Yeah? Um, Suzlan, the, the recently Suzlan's uh, founder chairperson Tulsi Tanti passed away. Um, he is brother now, Vinod Tanti, you could write this. Sujlan is run by chairman Vinod Tanti. Vinod Tanti, T-A-N-T-I, -T Tanti. Tanti. We'll discuss one more choice. Region Power Tech. Region Power Tech is run by Madhusudan Khemka. Madhusudan Khemka. K-H-E-M-K. Madhusudan Khemka. Identify the correct statements regarding the gold reserves of India at end September 2022. So these are the things that India has about 785 metric tons of gold while about some of this is held overseas with the Bank of England and some with the Bank of Set International Settlements. Um, a lot of gold is held domestically. Yeah. And it is believed that nearly one third of the gold uh, <laughs> Um, apart from what the government of India has, one third of the global gold is with the Indian households. Now, this is a pure conjecture because we haven't gone around and, you know, calculated how much gold a particular household has. And generally, Indians don't reveal such things also. Yeah. So, uh, I want you to write a bit about uh, the top global, top three um, gold reserves holder. You could write this. Top three gold reserves holders top three gold reserves holders dash june 2022 as of june 2022 that's the data i have not september june hardly there hardly would be any hardly would any be you know there hardly would be any changes so one us us how much gold does it do they have? So if you want to write data, I can tell you this. This is 8133 meter tons, metric tons. That is 8133 metric tons. 8133 tons. Next. Two, Germany. Double three double five. Double three double five tons. Next, Italy. Number third, Italy, 2452, 2452, 2452, okay. India in the ninth place, 785, 785, as of today it is 785, okay. So, well, simple question actually. I think in one of our classes I discussed why gold, why not chromium, why not nickel, why not iron, yeah, why not osmium, rhodium. I discussed this quite in great detail actually. Hmm? Who has become the first Indian American to be elected Lieutenant Governor of Maryland, United States? You see the way I pronounce that word, this one, Lieutenant. You can say Lieutenant also. Lieutenant is American pronunciation. Lieutenant, Lieutenant, Lieutenant is the British pronunciation. Now, you look at this, Liu means in place of. Tenant, in place of the holder, is Lieutenant Governor. So, the Governor is a holder and below the Governor, in case the Governor is not available, the Lieutenant Governor takes care of the issues, I mean, the office. Okay. This, ladies and gentlemen, is... Aruna Miller, Aruna Miller, you could write one particular thing. First South Asian, first South Asian woman, first South Asian woman, woman LG, 
first south asian woman lg lg is lieutenant governor lieutenant governor in the us in the us first south asian woman lg in the us yeah so the rest of these guys are all you know they they have been elected to the offices you know as senate members congress persons state legislatures and all yeah. most of in fact almost all of them are democrats they are all democrats yeah. with a little over 7 14 sorry little under 15000 crore of consolidated net income which company bid reliance industries to become the most profitable corporate in the second quarter of financial year 23 second quarter would be from uh, you know june uh, july from july to october yeah uh, april may june quarter 1 quarter 2 july august september okay the third starts on in october october or october 1st october november december that's quarter 3 quarter 4 is january february march so there are four quarters in the second quarter state bank of india made nearly 15000 crore in net profit yeah uh, in i mean that's a lot of money not net profit it is actually gross hmm? that's a lot of money my friends what about the choices ongc oil and natural gas corporation ladies and gentlemen is uh, run by subhash yeah shankar subhash then subhash shankar kumar okay then bhl nalin shingal nalin n a l i n nalin shingal s h i n g h a l shingal next sale what is sale sale is Sp uh, steel authority of india limited steel authority of india limited this is run by soma mondal soma s o m a soma mondal m o n d a l i believe that she is a first woman ceo of a maharatna okay maharatna according to provisional figures from the comptroller and auditor general of india which indian state topped in terms of its own tax revenues in h1 first half that is april to september financial year 23 maharashtra maharashtra collected nearly 1.15 lakh crore rupees yes yes in the first 6 months of this financial year maharashtra collected 1 lakh 15000 crore rupees in tax revenues okay second was uttar pradesh 1 lakh crore rupees it's actually 1.02 lakh you make it 1 lakh crore rupees so one maharashtra to what is that um, um uttar pradesh okay three tamil nadu no three karnataka third place karnataka about 68000 crore 68000 crore 68000 crore hmm. who is the comptroller and auditor general of india it is girish chandra murmu C A G of India is Girish Chandra Murmu M U R M U Girish Chandra Murmu By the way do you know who are the CMs of all these places Maharashtra Eknath Shinde S H I N D E Eknath Shinde is the CM of India's third biggest state by area Maharashtra Uttar Pradesh Yogi Adityanath Yogi Adityanath Uttar Pradesh is India's fourth biggest by area and most populous most populous Tamil Nadu it is MK Stalin MK Stalin S T A L I N MK is Muttuvel Karunanidhi Stalin Karnataka Basavaraj Bombay Basavaraj Bombay, B O M M A I, Bombay, Basavaraj, Bombay. Next, Telangana, K Chandrasekhar Rao, K Chandrasekhar Rao, 
Telangana is India's youngest state. Youngest state. According to data from the Association of Mutual Funds in India, which state has the highest mutual fund penetration in India? Maharashtra. See, this is the reason is that Maharashtra has, you know, generally high literacy rate, uh, higher income, you know, people with higher income and high net individuals. They have a large number of people with higher per capita than the rest of India, than most parts of India. Okay. So, industrialization, high literacy, high incomes, high and large number of high net worth individuals, all these things matter, my friends. Yeah. Um, who is the CEO? Who is the uh, CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the AMFI, AMFI, which is the Association of Mutual Funds in India? That's, ladies and gentlemen, um, NS Venkatesh. NS Venkatesh. NS Venkatesh. Okay. Look at choice C. Oh, sorry, three. Goa. Goa is um, India's smallest state by area. India's smallest state by area is Goa. Okay. It's about 3,705. 3,702. Take 3,700 square kilometers. Okay. Goa, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is run by who is the CM? Pramod Savant. S A W A N T. Savant. Pramod Savant. Pramod Savant. Next. According to data from Energy tra Cargo Tracker, what takes uh, with a contribution of about 22%, which of which is India's top soil, uh, sorry, which is India's top oil supplier as of today? It is Russia. How do you pronounce it? Russia, not Russia. Ia, no, it's A, Russia. Russia. Now, you know what? Today, Russia you know, supplies 22% of India's crude requirements. Fair? But till about six months back, in March 2022, Russia is to supply, you know, 0.2% of India's oil needs. Can you believe that? 0.2%. From 0.2% to 22% in about six months. What's changed? The Ukraine war. The Ukraine war uh, plus uneven global recovery plus, you know, uh, the fact that um, there is a great deal of inflation plus the fact that there has been a decrease in the price of oil, you know, in the supply of oil because of the OPEC plus block. Now, all these factors have led to a rise in oil prices. Oil has become expensive in the international market, but India is the third largest importer. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, you could write this. So India is the third largest importer and consumer, both third largest importer and third largest consumer of oil. Okay. Third largest energy, you know, um, or say importer and consumer of oil. In brackets, you could write after China and US, after China and US. But we need oil. We import about 83, 82% of our needs. So where will we buy it from? Price C, Iraqi oil has become expensive. But then the Russians said, hey guys, why didn't you buy from us? Uh, there have been sanctions against us. Well, of course, they didn't say this, but we know that. The Ukraine war brought a lot of sanctions against Russia. So there was a ban on purchase of Russian oil, you know. So we said we will buy Russian oil because the Russians offered their oil to us at a discount price. They discounted price. We said it doesn't matter where we buy it from as long as we buy it cheap. So we pushed, we, we, we bought much more from Russia than any other country in the world in the last Two, three months. So Russia has now become a steady supplier of crude to India. They make money from India, which is good for them. And they find a market for it, you know, uh, which is also again good for them. And as far as we are concerned, we are buying it cheap, which is good for us. We are buying it from, we have energy, uninterrupted supply of energy, which also is good for us. So it's a win-win for both the parties. Yeah. So what are the top three, you know, uh, 
suppliers of crude oil to India in the last in in, in October 2022. You want to write this? You, I will tell you top through top three oil suppliers. Top three oil suppliers to India in October 2022. October 2022. One, Russia, 22%, 22%, two, Iraq, about 20.6%, make it 21%, now what's the harm, 21%, three, Saudi Arabia, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, um, 16%, 16, 16.16%. Okay. This is one of my favorite areas, energy politics. But I get pretty little time, pretty little scope to discuss these issues. Yeah. Hog Rune stunned six-time champion Novak Djokovic to win the Paris Masters tennis title. It's a six million dollar you know, tennis tournament, my friends. Rune is from, you know, Denmark. He is from Denmark. Rune is from Denmark. Currently world 10, world number 10. He is um, from Denmark. Novak Djokovic, currently world number 8. He is from Serbia. S-E-R-B-I-A. Serbia. So this is a singles tournament, singles championship where, you know, um, Rune defeated Djokovic in the final. What about doubles winners? So I'll give you the names of, the, of only the winners. Okay, no runners up. Doubles winners at Paris Masters. You could write the names of the winners. Neil Skupski. Neil. N-E-A-L. Neil. N-E-A-L. Neil. Skupski. S-K-U-P-S-K-I. Okay, Neil Skupski. He belongs to yeah UK, United Kingdom. He belongs to United Kingdom. He belongs to UK. And Woosley Kulhoff, I'll spell. Okay, um, not exactly Woosley, but I heard somewhere that the guy's name was pronounced Woosley, but I would say Wesley because that's a pretty normal name in America. Wesley, W-E-S-L-E-Y. W E S L E Y Wesley Kulov K O O L H O F. I repeat K O O L H O F Wesley Kulov in brackets Netherlands, 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 okay, Netherlands. So Skupski from UK and um, Kulov from Netherlands. Fair? You know the capitals of these places? Denmark, Copenhagen. C-O-P-E-N-H-A-G-E-N. Copenhagen. You don't really require the names of the leaders because Matty Fredriksen is a leader, Prime Minister of Denmark. But let's not discuss too much of, too many complications. Netherlands. Amsterdam, A M S T E R D A M, Amsterdam, Amsterdam. Next, Greece, Athens, Athens, A T H E N S, Athens, Spain, uh, Madrid, M A D R I D, Madrid. Italy, Rome, R-O-M-E, Rome. Who won his maiden Moto GP, two-wheeler GP, Grand Prix. GP is Grand Prix, okay. World Championship at the season ending, Valencia Grand Prix, Francisco Bagnia. These ladies and gentlemen are the top five finishers. I wrote it like this, you know, um, top five finishers in the in the World Championship. So the maiden tone, maiden title, you know, um, of Bagnia came at this year, you know, came this year. 
he belongs to Italy. Francisco Bagnia belongs to Italy. Number two, Fabrio belongs to France. France. Ernie belongs to Italy. Alex, Spain. Alex belongs to Spain. And then Jack Miller, Australia. Australia. Yeah. See these Ducati, Yamaha, Aprilia, these are all the names of the teams who, you know, whose vehicles they ride. Yeah. In fact, this year, while Bagnia had won the final championship, Grand Prix World Championship, the, the team championship was won by Ducati. Okay, Ducati. By the way, this Valencia is in Spain. Is in Spain. The home country of Felix Espargar, Espargaro. Yeah. Alex Espargaro. Identify the correct statements of the WMO, Provisional State of the Global Climate 2022. Okay, uh, I want you to write what is the full name of WMO? World Meteorological Organization. Meteorological. M E T E O R O L O G I C A L. Meteorological Organization. Head office Geneva. G E N E V A. Geneva. G E N E V A. Geneva. Where is Geneva? Switzerland. Next. Secretary General. Secretary General is Petteri Talas. Petteri. P E T T E R I. Petteri Talas. T A A L A S. T A A L L A S. Talas. Of Finland, F I N L A N D, Finland, Petteri Talas of Finland. Hmm. Okay, now I want you to write what is this COP, C O P. Okay, this mentioned here. You write COP, C O P, underline that one. Conference of parties, conference of parties. Conference of Parties. Next, full name of UNFCCC. United Nations, I repeat, United Nations. Framework Convention, Framework Convention. United Nations, Framework Convention. On Climate Change, on Climate Change. On Climate Change. Okay, so climate change. So that's a full form. And um, from there we can go to what is, um, see the COP27, so not COP27, what COP does is it monitors, it makes sure that countries that promise that we are going to do this, do that, to mitigate climate change, to reduce emissions and everything, they you know, they would implement those provisions, those measures. So whatever the countries promise in terms of their national commitments, COP, which is a supreme decision making body, okay, of UNFCCC, it makes sure that those, or at least it monitors the implementation of such promises. That's about it, nothing more, okay? Now, one more thing is this. Um, this year's COP27, you could write, COP27 dash held at, it's actually, it's recently it was held at, held at Sharm, S-H-A-R-M, S-H-A-R-M, Sharm, S-H-A-R-M, Sharm, El Sheikh, E-L-L, Sharm, space, E-L-L, hyphen, Shake S H E I K H S H E I K H 
शर्म अल शेख इन इजिप्ट इन इजिप्ट इन इजिप्ट शर्म अल शेख इन इजिप्ट ओके सो दिस इज क्लाइमेट चेंज कॉन्फ्रेंस इज बीइंग हेल्ड इन इजिप्ट नो व्हेन वाज द कॉप फर्स्ट हेल्ड यू कुड राइट दिस एक्स्ट्रा पॉइंट कॉप वन हेल्ड इन हेल्ड इन Berlin, B E R L I N, Berlin. I repeat, B E R L I N, Berlin. In 1995, in 1995, Berlin, as you know, is the capital of Germany. Yeah. Okay. The Supreme Court of India recently upheld 10% reservation for the economically weaker sections in public education and employment. In this context, which the following constitutional amendments deal with this reservation? 103rd Constitutional Amendment. I want you to write a bit about this EWS. Right. Economically weaker sections. Underline that first one. Refers to. Refers to. Financially weaker, financially weaker sections, financially weaker sections of people, I repeat, financially weaker sections of people in general category, in general category, financially weaker sections of people in general category, in general category, next. these this rather this section or ews are eligible ews are you could write ease also no when i say sections we are talking about people basically are eligible for 10% reservation for 10% reservation in central government educational institutes in central government educational institutes and and central government jobs and central government jobs central government jobs so who would get how do you identify how do we identify economically weaker section okay so you could write this one or other like continue next point gross annual gross annual gross g r o s s don't say gross say gross gross annual family income should not exceed rupees 8 lakh rupees 8 lakh gross annual family income should not exceed rupees 8 lakh now this could come from any source employment or you know agriculture or whatever it is it should not exceed 8 lakh rupees per annum i mean entire family's income okay next next point um must not own must not own must not or should not you could must not own more than more than 5 acres of agricultural land 5 acres of agricultural land 5 acres of agricultural land next must not rather um, you could write this easy in fact i will uh, residential area residential area it could be a flat or whatever residential area must be below must be below 1000 square feet 1000 square feet 1000 square feet okay See, as of today, reservations go like this. 
you have scheduled tribe communities scheduled tribe 7.5 percent reservation 7.5 scheduled caste reservation is 15 percent 1 5 third point other backward communities or other backward classes other backward classes 27 percent 27 percent 27 percent so we have 27 percent for obc 15 percent for um, what is it um, sc 7.5 percent for st so technically 14 49.5 the supreme court in the past had barred reservation of you know the reservation should not exceed 50 percent you know um, but then Tamil Nadu came up with its own amendment. They, it, you know, there is 69% reservation in Tamil Nadu. Okay, 31% of seats are in general category. So it will help you to learn more about this particular thing. Okay, how is the EWS different from the economically backward sections? Find out all these things. It's good to learn, my friends. Hmm? So. This 10% quota will come within the general category. Okay, please know this it refers to I told you that it refers to financial section you know, financially weaker sections of people in general category. So 50.5% reservation is for general category. Take 50% within this 10% will be for EWS. Okay. Yeah. Under whose leadership did the center recently constitute the 22nd Law Commission of India? Rituraj Avasti. Rituraj Avasti. So why don't you write a bit uh, of a short note on, rather, why don't you write a short note on the Law Commission of India? Write this. Law Commission of India. Law Commission of India. Underline that first point. Established by, established by, Order of Government of India. Order of Government of India. Order of Government of India. It's not a constitutional body. Not. Hmm? Number two. First time established by. First time established by British government in 1834. 1834 1834 next main function is to main function is to main function is to research research and advise research and advice the government of india the government of india research and advice government of india on legal reform on legal reform legal reform legal reform okay next headed by headed by a retired judge a retired judge and comprises and comprises and comprises legal experts legal experts legal experts next Chairman of 22nd Law Commission. Chairman of 22nd Law Commission. Justice Rituraj Avasti. Retired Justice Rituraj Avasti. Rituraj Avasti. He was a Chief Justice of Karnataka High Court. And before that, he was a judge in Allahabad High Court. Okay. So, Rituraj Avasti is a retired Chief Justice of Karnataka High Court. Ok. 
Okay. So, see, Niti Ayo, Law Commission of India are not constitutional bodies. If you look at Finance Commission of India, Election Commission of India, um, you know, these are all constitutional bodies. They are mentioned, clearly, categorically mentioned in the Constitution of India. Where? Right? And you see this choice is there. Legal experts we mentioned. So these are the legal experts as members of the law commission. There is one more, but you don't require the names of the members actually. Okay. So mm -hmm. Anand Paliwal, um, Paliwal, Shankaran, you know, all these names are there, Arya and all. The ISRO is moving its operational activities to its marketing arm, New Space India Limited, and focus exclusively on research and development. Identify the correct statements regarding the ISRO and NSIL. All of them are right. Okay. All of them are right. Look at choice A, for example, Sridhara Srinath, sorry, Sridhara Somnath. Sridhara Somnath is the chairman of ISRO. Sridhara Somnath is the chairperson of ISRO. So all of these guys basically, you know, they, they are there. They are running the show here. And if you look at the last point there, LVM3, GSLV Mark 3 has been renamed LVM3. LVM stands for Launch Vehicle Mark 3. Launch Vehicle, V-E-H-I-C-L-E. -E. The H, as I told you in the past, the H in vehicle is silent. Okay, vehicle. Launch Vehicle Mark 3. Mark 3. So, I think there is pretty little to discuss here. Yeah. The Unified Payments Interface is a payment system launched by the National Payments Corporation of India. So this is a globally, you know, renowned uh, uh, digital payment system. This is uh, built by N NPCI, which is a part of the RPI, which is owned by the RPI. And NPCI, ladies and gentlemen, is head it's headquartered in Mumbai, headquartered in Mumbai. And its um, managing director is Dilip Asbe. Dilip Asbe, A-S-B-E, Dilip Asbe. Okay, Dilip Asbe. Hmm. Competition Commission of India doesn't have a full-time chairperson. As of now, the acting chairperson is Sangeeta Verma. Sangeeta Verma, who is, as you know, a member, actually. You know, as you would know, this is a member, basically. Okay, three and four we discussed a while ago. The deposit of a customer in a bank is the liability of the bank. Now, what's a liability? Liability is the obligation to repay. In this case, the obligation to repay. So, when you when I borrow money from my friend, I have an obligation to repay. It's my liability because the my friend had lent her money to me. You know, she had lent her asset to me. But for me, her asset becomes a liability. I have to repay it. So when you go to a bank and deposit bank, you know, money in a bank, it's an asset that you are putting in the bank. But for the bank, it's a liability. The bank has to return your money to you. So all deposits are technically called liabilities of the bank. Okay, they're always called liabilities. Now, what's an asset for the bank? Usually, you have the money that is lent by bank, that's its asset. Okay, so you look at that, so a non-performing asset. When a bank lends money, but does not, you know, receive that money for in the form of repayment, everything, that loan becomes a non-performing asset. The bank lent its money, its asset to you, but you didn't repay. So it becomes a non-performing asset. Okay. 